Hey, good, good morning. morning. All right, all you brave people coming here. Uh, good morning. We are, <clears throat> excuse me, we are here to uh, fellowship and worship. Um, we really don't have a whole lot of uh, announcements, obviously, since not a lot is going on right now. Uh, we, of course, um, have a lot of the requests per that we'll be giving later on, but um, but I appreciate all of you at home tuning in. Uh, hopefully you have a cup of coffee or whatever, um, and you are relaxing and, and be able to enjoy and worship with us this morning. Um, I do believe this week we actually have a donate button on Facebook, so uh, we've been trying to do this for a while because I know people have been telling me that they, they have every intention to give and they just keep forgive, forgetting because it's just because they're not here. So anyway, so if um, during the um, giving time or whatever, if you'd like to do that, it is there. Uh, we hopefully will have it available um, in the weeks to come as well. Um, if, that's, if God lays that on your heart, do that. From anyone here, is there any announcements we need to make for anything? We do have a council meeting this week. Uh, is that Thursday at 5.30? Thursday at 5.30, very good. Church Council meeting. All right. Okay, well, with that said, let's sing. We're going to sing, um, I believe, three verses of Come Christian, Join, and Sing. Um, it'll be on there if you uh, need your hymnal. It is hymn number 90. coming from Psalm 116. <clears throat> I'm going to be reading um, verse 1 and then uh, 10 through 17. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. I believe in you, so I said. I am deeply troubled, Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. 
The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. O oh Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. And may he bless the reading of scripture this morning. We're going to continue singing. We're singing a Holy is the Lord and then Consuming Fire. Oh, my. 
two things lately, um, doing both the offering and the prayer, since we're not taking up uh, a normal collection. So um, those of us who are here, there are collection plates in the back in the foyer, so if you'd like to give, uh, you can give that, uh, you can do it now if you wanted to, or, or on the way out, however you want to do it. And uh, of course, those people at home who uh, would like to give, uh, you can either send it in by a check, uh, you can even do it through uh, Facebook today. Um, and uh, that would be great. So um, I'm going to actually say a short prayer for the offering, and then we will take prayer requests and then uh, pray the pastoral prayer. So, Lord, I just ask that um, you lay on our hearts according to your plan and purpose how we give. We pray as a part of our service of worship that this would be, a, uh, in a sense, a sacrifice that we give um, to, to you, Lord. And I pray that you would use all the funds for your glory, for your honor, and that we would uh, be faithful to you and show that we trust that you will take care of us. Uh, in Christ's name, amen. All right, so we, um, we have some ongoing uh, requests. Obviously, we have... Excuse me, I'm getting my pen here. We have the requests. Um, uh, continue to pray for my brother. It's an ongoing request for his uh, treatment for his tumor. Um, also be praying for Ed's, uh, Ed Barrett's sister, um, uh, Bernadette, who has pancreatic cancer. Um, many that we know who, uh, I know Doreen has had an ongoing for uh, people in the nursing homes and uh, specifically for Cedar Hill that's here local, but I know there are uh, many others that uh, are experiencing issues with illness, with COVID, uh, and just pray for protection. And for those who are incredibly lonely um, as they haven't been able to see their family members. Um, uh, of course, the ongoing violence, and I know some new violence has erupted, uh, so we pray uh, that God would uh, work in the lives of um, our country for healing. Um, obviously, for those who um, are angry and uh, have turned to violence, that their hearts would understand that's not the way. Um, for those uh, who struggle or who don't struggle with racism, 
um, Lord, that, uh, that God would work in all of their hearts. So um, we just, uh, it, I know it breaks my heart to uh, continue to hear of uh, people dying. And uh, we need to be praying that God would continue to work there. Um, are there any that are coming online or anyone here that has requests? Lynn? So praying for Janet Gould, who uh, found out that she has cancer uh, in her brain, and I guess it's spread, so um, it's, not, it's not good. So we'll be praying for her and her family. Thanks, Lynn. Doreen? Oh, wow, okay. So, so Sheila Studley, Studley, who has been bit uh, by her cat and got infected. All right. Thanks, sir. Yeah, Henry. Yeah, I was going to say ho, 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 like you look a little bit like Santa Claus <laughs> with the beard. That's good. All right, very good. Um, what's her first name? JJ? Ginger, I'm sorry, Ginger, okay. Thank you. So let's pray for Ginger who uh, has illness with her kidneys. Uh, thanks, Henry. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 The... Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's a strange time, yeah. For all the grads, Coleman graduating, which we're happy for, and uh for all those who graduated. Go ahead. Hey. Okay. So we prayed for his friend, uh, Steve Hire's friend, Mike, who's having surgery on uh, tumors. And his, uh, does it say kidney? Yeah. Has fine what? Uh, oh, very good. Yeah, nice. There's her nephew, uh, Stacy's nephew, Kyle, who graduated from college. All right. Megan? All right, so my brother is having a test this week on Wednesday um, to see if his tumor has shrunk, so we'll be praying for that for sure. Okay. Doreen? Oh, wow, okay. 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 
Okay. All right. So he has shingles going toward his eye. So we'll definitely be praying for Randy, your husband. All right. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. So Amber's son, Eli, is going to be spending time in Ohio this summer. And um, so pray that they'll have safety as she drives to Ohio. That's a big trip. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, oh, wow. Okay, so Eli to Missouri. <laughs> it's like 135 hours. <laughs> yeah. It'll feel that way, believe me. <laughs> yeah, so, All right. Okay, let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you so much for uh, your love for us. We thank you that you care about the seemingly mundane and the overwhelming, that you are there in the midst of all that happen in our lives, and you are, um, you are sovereign. There are things that you allow to happen and we don't understand its purpose, but we trust that all things are working together for our good and for your glory. And uh, Lord, I know, and I know that many of us who are listening know that you are love, that you do love, and um, it, it upsets, it bothers, it, I'm, I'm not always sure of the language to use, but it saddens you when um, people do things that are hurtful and hateful and all of that. And I pray, Lord, as we see continued what I would just call chaos. And um, I, I just pray, Lord, that for our uh, men and women in blue, that you would, they would be able to stand up and do what is right, that any of those uh, officers who go rogue or who have hatred in their heart, uh, Lord, that they would be able to eliminate those uh, people from those forces and that they, those who are on the front lines to protect will do just that, actually protect and serve. And for those who have been affected by uh, um, uh, potential uh, police brutality and hatred, uh, that their hearts would, you'd be able to turn that anger and, and that rage around and that it wouldn't turn to violence and would not turn to um, uh, destruction, Lord, but they would find and, and be, we uh, together as a nation would find creative ways of creating um, and, and changing that which is, is wrong. So Lord, I just pray that um, as human beings, we have a hard time finding ban. I, I think we, we really, it's almost impossible for us to find balance. So we need you, Lord. We need to call upon you and uh, as a nation, we need to speak to you and ask for you to give us wisdom and give us ideas and turn our hearts from uh, that which is uh, hateful and hurtful into that which is love. And Lord, for all the uh, requests, and I know there are many, uh, there are many uh, people who, uh, who watch the videos and, and um, who are uh, worshiping that have, a, we could be here, I'm sure, all week, um, just taking requests and praying for one another. So for all those requests, um, that are not uh, being spoken, who are not being written. We, we just pray that each one of us, whether we're, we're, wherever we are, um, that as we pray together right now and as we individually pray for some of those things that are on our hearts, that you would hear it, that you would answer them um, in a way that would draw us closer to you, that we would see your hand in it, and that, uh, Lord, that you would be glorified and we would benefit and we would see your hand uh, moving. Uh, Lord, I pray specifically for uh, my brother Hugh, who has a test this week to uh, see if his tumor shrunk. We, we pray, God, um, in the name of Christ, that uh, you, would, you would do that. You would shrink that tumor, use the medicines and the treatments to uh, bring uh, healing into his body. We thank you that uh, this week he had uh, the, some of the bleeding that was going on in his body has stopped, 
And uh, we praise you for that and continue, Lord, we pray for, for healing. Uh, for Bernadette, who has pancreatic cancer, Lord, we ask that you would uh, continue to guide doctors, help her in the treatment, that that would be effective, and that she would have healing both in her uh, body and her soul. Uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Jeanette Gould, who uh, has found out she has cancer. Lord, I just pray that um, we know that you are there and, and, and with her. And I pray, God, that you would give. Uh, we, of course, pray for a miracle and healing. Um, and we just pray that you would use this time to draw her closer to you and just be with her family. And as, they, um, as your will is made known, uh, may they be able to uh, have peace in their heart and in their life uh, through all of this. We pray for uh, Sheila. Uh, Studley has this infection from a cat or bite. Uh, we pray, Lord, that it would uh, not uh, become too serious, that whatever the antibiotics or whatever that is that they are giving her would be effective and that she would heal uh, completely from it. Uh, for her husband, Randy, who has shingles, we pray that he would keep it from uh, going into his eye. Um, and I know that's a very painful thing, so I just pray for, um, pray for him and that whole thing that you bring healing. Uh, we pray for uh, Ginger, uh, who has this uh, illness in her kidney. Um, we just pray that you would uh, bring healing to her as well. Um, and, um, <clears throat> and that you would allow um, Henry uh, to be a, a blessing to her and to be a, a point of uh, encouragement to her as well as we pray. And uh, we, we trust that you would bring healing. Well, we pray for Coleman, who's graduating from high school, and all the other graduates. And there are... Uh, obviously, I think most of us know people who are graduating from high school and, and college. We just ask that you would give them, in this really strange time of uh, distance learning and all of that, that um, you would give them direction, that they would have an understanding. Um, and we pray that you would uh, make it so that, that uh, young people could go back to school and, and be safe and, um, and that... Uh, these students would be able to find uh, their education and uh, that you would direct them and lead them uh, in life, Lord, they would find their purpose. Um, we pray this for Kyle as well. Uh, we pray for um, Mike, who uh, Steve's friend, who has a tumor in his kidney, uh, and he's going to be having surgery. We just ask that you would um, guide the doctor's hands and bring healing to his life. And for Eli and Amber, uh, the family there, as they travel to Ohio, and Eli goes on to Missouri, that you would keep them all uh, safe, that they would have uh, a good time in, in the travels together and uh, protect them and uh, just help Eli to have a fantastic summer um, away and, uh, and that um, the family would be able to grow close and tight and uh, they would be able to uh, uh, praise you for how well it went. And now, Lord, uh, we just pray that you would give us a united heart and mind as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> well, this is, I believe, the last sermon on the Lord's Prayer. And I'm just going to go ahead and uh, read this section of Scripture, um, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So, Matthew 6, starting in verse 5, and it says, When you pray... Jesus is speaking here. Don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues and wherever you can see them. I tell you the truth that all their reward, that's all their reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself and shut the door behind you and pray to your Father in private. And when your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on and on as other people do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating the words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask Him. So, 
pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So this week, we're going to talk about the evil one. Pick the best to last. This was a really hard one. I could go like a million different directions with talking about um, what is evil and what all, all, of its, all of its different angles. So I, st I was really, I mean, I've been, I've been chewing on this for a long time, and, um, and it just kind of dawned on me recently the way, the kind of the direction I'm going to go with it. Um, how many of you uh, had a, have had a bully in your life? Like when you were a kid or maybe even now? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't like bullies. I really have a hard time with bullies. And the, I think the first bully that I remember was a kid in elementary school. I'll just give him, I actually remember his name really well, but I'll just give him his first name was Kelly. And uh, Kelly was a kid who was very big for his age. And um, he kind of wielded that power uh, quite fluidly um, with us. And my last name is Boy, so all my life growing up, I got teased about my name. So after a while, I got kind of used to it. You know, boy's a girl, boy's a girl, and they make fun of me and doing all these kinds of things. And I, and I'm not advocating this at all, but I remember like being at recess and uh, we would play uh, like tag football. The boys would be out in the field and um, mostly boys, a couple of girls that were um, rugged um, because Touch football tended to get a little more than just touch. And, um, and Kelly, this kid, was constantly haranguing me for whatever reason. I don't know, because I was kind of quiet. But he, for whatever reason, really zeroed in on me. And it wasn't like, I wasn't necessarily scared of him, but I was definitely intimidated by him. And, I, and I'm... I'm pretty sure I was talking to my brother about it one day, because he's my older brother, I'm the youngest. And he's like, man, would you, you got to stand up to a bully. So next time you're playing touch football, let him have it. So I'm like, again, I'm not advocating this. I'm just saying that I was, we were playing football, and um, I had the ball. <laughs> and uh, Kelly was coming to me. And if I remember this correctly, I basically tossed him the ball, he caught it, and then I decked him. Um, he was on the other team, and then I just started taking his face and putting him in the dirt. Okay, now, kids, don't do this. This is not, I'm not advocating this at all. I'm just saying that, honest to God, after that, Kelly was my best friend. There was something about standing up to a bully. Now, the way I did it was very immature and not appropriate, but... I stood up to a bully, and the bully became friends with me. And this is the thing. This is the thing about bullies. I was looking up at by, uh, definition what bully was, and Webster's said this. I mean, they had a few different definitions. The one I liked was one who habitually is cruel, insulting, or threatening, dominating others who are weaker, smaller, or in some way vulnerable. Um, bullies come in all shapes and sizes. They come in all ages. They come in all sex and gender. They come uh, in... They're just out there. I told you about Kelly. I've been, I've been in church basically my whole life, and I've been in church leadership for a very long time, and I've encountered bullies on church boards. Um... And it's not like they're, they're not mean people. They just want their way. That's kind of how we are as human beings, right? We, we kind of think we know what's best. I've been in meetings before. I'm not saying here. I'm just saying in, in, I've been in ministry for a 
long time. <laughs> and uh, I've been in a lot of just churches and I've been in a lot of meetings where someone will come in and say, listen, this idea is ridiculous, it's dumb, I don't want anything to do with it, so let's talk about it. <laughs> you know, and it's like, uh, yeah, there's no, no discussion, no anything. And they, uh, they're able to wield their influence in a way to get people to fall in line. That's what bullies do. Their um, social media, oh my gosh, I cannot be on Facebook anymore. Seriously, like, and I get sucked in because I'll look at the church video, you know, and I'm on the church website, and then something will catch my attention and be like, oh, that's cute, and then I'm sucked in. And I start scrolling down, and sure enough, it's like, what? And I, I'm like on my computer ready to, oh my gosh, I'm ready to unload. Da, 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 exclamation point, exclamation point, all caps. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, this is not going to help. This is not going to help, but it would feel so good. Because this person is calling people who don't agree with them idiots and this and that and all kinds of names. And they're just like, oh my gosh, this is so wrong. And you just want to tell people off. And it's like, that's, it's, <laughs> I'm not going to mention any names, but I know somebody who's close to me who loves to post certain things to get things going. Do I hear an amen from, uh, anyway. And so, <laughs> it's so, and I love it. I love it. I actually kind of think it's funny because I'm like, oh, here, dude, post that. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, 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 not you, no. It's not you at all, David. I would never do that. And there's, yeah, and there's just this, this, like, because, and then there's pages of comments and arguments going on, right? And it's because you cannot, it's not a, a, a I was reading this week, there's two basic types of people. There are people who make decisions based on emotion and people who make decisions on reason. And there's probably some that do a little bit of both. I tend to be an emotional person who tries to use reason, right? Um, and then there's, so you've got people who, you can present the most reasonable request, and they will argue and argue and argue and argue because that's how they feel. And then it becomes personal. And then it becomes really personal. And then friends become enemies, and it's really unfortunate. And so I, when I think about this concept of bullying, and I, and I step back and I say, how often have I unintentionally tried? I, okay, let's just get honest for a second. When I, my, one of my last positions, I, did, I hate being misunderstood. I mean, who here loves to be misunderstood? <laughs> No, no one wants to be misunderstood. You know, you, you have the best intentions, so you present something, and it's misconstrued. I was like, no, 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 that's not what I'm saying. And then you just try to help them understand what you're saying. Because you're not saying that. That's not what I mean. And then they're like, well, it, and, then, and then, like, this argument and fight starts. And it's like, why am I, why is this happening? Why don't they just listen to me? Why don't they just hear the words I'm saying? Well, they are. And there's all this, this, this strife that can develop because you misunderstand me, and I want you to know that my intentions are good. And they're like, I don't know about your intentions. All I know is this is what you said and how it made me feel. And it's like, okay, well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say that. It's not what I intended. And it's like, yeah, but you did, and now I'm upset. And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry. Can you accept my apology? No. It hurt. Now what do we do with it? Right? Are you guys any good at apologizing? Wow. Are you? Good for you. I mean, I've gotten good because i got a lot of practice. Because I'm always somehow like, oh, I probably shouldn't have said that. And then I go and I say, hey, I'm sorry. I remember saying that to my kids when they were young. That was like one of the harder things I've ever done. Go to your room, you little brat. I shouldn't have said that. Hey, sorry for getting upset and calling you a brat. Even though you are. So you apologize, 
And you want the person to accept your apology, and so you badger them. Well, all you're doing now is becoming a bully. You see, you're, you're just wanting them to do what's right. You're just wanting them to think the right way, and so you are doing everything in your power to make them think the right way. You bunch of knuckleheads. Why can't you just understand that my way is the right way? And it's wrong. It's bullying. There's um, the evil one in this passage. The phrase before, he says, lead us not or help us not to fall into temptation. So last week we talked about temptation, the idea that this, that we have our own inside of us. Right? There's this, there's this draw towards self-fulfillment. There's this draw toward selfishness and just making sure that the world revolves around me and that my needs are being met. And so I am out to get my needs met. And I will meet other people's needs who are on board with meeting my needs. And so the Bible says in James that temptation is when we our own desire, we are, we are drawn away and enticed by what's inside of us. And then what's inside of us, when it gives birth, it gives birth to sin. When it's fully conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it's fully conceived, when it's fully grown, it gives birth to death. And so we move what we think is, is for self-fulfillment, and we end up dying sometimes physically, sometimes emotionally, sometimes spiritually. And we move away from that, which actually is fulfilling. Because God says, I know it's counterintuitive, but what's inside of you sometimes isn't healthy. That desire you have isn't always a healthy desire. I want you to move this way, and I want you to love other people. I actually, he says in Philippians, I want you to think of others more than yourself. Now, wait a second. Now, I will consider other people, but you want me to consider people more than me? Do you know who I live with? These people are impossible. Do you know who my neighbor is? Do you know the complete knucklehead who lives next door? The one who... Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're talking to your wife? Yeah, okay. All right, so, yes. <laughs> so, God's like, yeah, I want you to think of their needs and think of who they are and think of what their situation is, even above your own. I was listening to a pastor, a uh, um, black pastor down in Dallas this week, and he was on an interview, uh, T.D. Jakes, and he was talking about these, uh, this, 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 like the concepts of racism and um, power and all of this. And he says, the truth is, is that we want certain things to happen on a, on a large scale. We want things like our churches to be mixed. And we want, our, uh, we want this, to, we want to see progress in this area, in this area, in this area. But the truth is, is if we don't do it ourselves on Saturday, you're never going to see it happen on Sunday. He was like, if you don't make friends who look different than you, it's not going to happen. If you don't make friends, if we don't make friends who, who dress differently than you do, it's not going to happen. If we don't make friends who vote differently than we do, it's not going to happen. And let's face it, those of us who live up here, we don't have a lot of ethnic diversity up here. We're 95% white. And then the other percent is like in Burlington. You know? I mean, we, have, we don't have much around here. The diversity we have is most of the socioeconomic. And it's like, and there's certain those people who live over there. I mean, I'll drop off some food to them. I'll open our food pantry up to them. But do I really want to make friends with them? Mm. Because they smell eh, not so great. They don't necessarily have all their teeth. You know, and so some of us, we really struggle with the idea of how do we connect with those people. 
Well, I don't. I avoid them. I'll say hi to them. I'll be nice. So the pastor's point was, is if we want to understand, you're never going to understand someone who's different than you if you don't get to know them. If you don't understand where they're coming from, you can't until you become friends with people. And that takes energy. So the, it goes from tempting, being tempted inside of ourselves to isolate ourselves or only to be with those who are like-minded, who are monolithic, that we want to get together, we want to rip apart this politician, or we want to get together, we want to rip apart this person at work, or we want to get together and talk about our cousin who's a real loser. And, you know, and, we, and, we, want, and we just love being around people who think and act and do as we do. And then the other people, well, you know, I mean, I don't hate them. I mean, they're different, but then it's just let them be over there. That's the temptation. And then what happens is there's this little voice who starts to speak to us. The Bible describes as the evil one here in this passage. Now, it was interesting. I was looking up this week. Um, Satan. Um, really, the first use of Satan is not until Chronicles. Not until after um, the Babylonian captivity. So basically, you have the first large section of ancient Israel having no mention of uh, a Satan. And by the way, Satan is not really a name. It's just a word. It means accuser, right? Um, it was just a transliteration. They just took the word Satan and they just put it into English. But it means accuser. The next, in this, in 1 Samuel, it's when David was taking a census, which was interesting because in Kings, the book before, it says that God instructed David to take a census. And then in 1 Samuel, it says, and the devil, Satan, filled David to take a census. And it's like, maybe they figured out, because it didn't go well for David when he took the census, that it wasn't God who led it. Maybe it was something else, right? We have in Job, where it looks like this, this accuser, this Satan, is part of a heavenly council talking to God. And in Job, if you remember the story, the council comes together before God, and God sees the accuser, Satan. And he says, hey, where have you been? And the accuser says, oh, I've been out and about checking out everybody and seeing if they're really one of your followers, basically, you know, if they really love you. He says, well, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> Job, please. Rich, big family. Yeah, anyone who prays you that. And we know how it happens. Job gets devastated, right? It seemed like in that situation, Satan was part of God's counsel. Like in his, almost like it was his job to go out there and try to tempt and accuse people of being no good, right? The word devil means slanderer. In the New Testament, we have a lot more information. So Jesus is saying, he says, when you pray, pray that you are not, that you're going to be rescued from the evil one. Now, it's really funny. He doesn't say the accuser, Satan. He doesn't say the devil, slander. He says the evil one. And if you look up that word evil, it basically says the antithesis to God. So God is love. God is just. God is set apart. He's holy. So the antithesis to that is hate. Violence. You see, what God does is God brings people together in love. What Satan does is he tears them apart. He loves to see churches being torn apart. He loves it. Because the one thing, if he... I had a guy tell me once who was having really struggles in his life. And his marriage was about shot. He was a pastor. He says, you know, I'm convinced that if the evil one can't get to you, he'll try to get to somebody else. Because he wants you destroyed. He wants you laying in a corner and a ball crying and worthless because you're like, where is God? Where, uh, where are God's people? 
I'm all alone, I'm devastated, I'm distraught, I'm destroyed, and I hate life. And Satan, the accuser, the evil one, sits back and just laughs, right? So what he, Jesus is saying, deliver us from that. Don't let us fall for the anti-God, whatever that looks like. And so when people who have been hurt by other people, when we allow that seed of hurt and anger and distrust to grow, when we are tempted to allow and to let it seethe, that temptation gives birth to sin and activity. And then that sin results in death. I was reading this week that because there's been over 15 African-American people who have been killed in the rioting. Rioting to protest the death, the horrible, horrible death of a man. And then 15 other people die in the result of that. So what kind of protests kill people to protest death? It's insane to me. It's like, people, we've got to stop because I know that the evil one is out there whispering into everyone's ear, they deserve this. It doesn't matter who they are. These are the people that you're supposed to love. And it's destructive. I don't know what possessed that cop to be on the neck. And I just heard about another one. I just saw one. I, oh, man, it just drives me crazy. Three police officers on one guy. And he's like, I can't breathe. A diff different guy completely. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. And the cop says, I don't care. Just stays on him. Like, what is that? Is there a little, is the evil one just whispering? He's like, he deserves it. He's a scumbag. Just do it. He's a scumbag. And then everybody else around gets angry. And the, little, and the evil one is just laughing because he's seen ones die and he's like, now let's create more chaos. Let's create more death. They deserve it. Kill them all. Destroy it all. Corporate America. Little guy. It doesn't matter. Just destroy and destruct. It's like, I'm sorry. I don't know what's ever in everyone's heart, but I know something. This is not God's way. God has called us to love. He's called us to love those who hate us. But how do we do that? How do we do when people abuse, when people use words, not even physical violence, when people use words? How do we respond? I know how I respond. That's not good. I when I preach, man, I'm not preaching because I got it all together by any stretch of the imagination, as those of you who know me best know. I get in the car, oh, I'm crazy, man. I can be praying, I can praise, I can be singing. Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord is good, Lord is good. Some guy cut me off. <laughs> Come on, you know, and I'm just like turned into psycho boy, you know? Like, what just happened to me? I was praising the Lord, and now I'm just going to get on that guy's bumper. Don't you ever cut me off? You want to see something? Yeah, I'll show you something. Come on, yeah. Uh -huh. it's like, like, what, is, what just happened? <laughs> it's insane, right? If the guy pulls over, I had this happen. <laughs> I don't even know if I should admit to this. <laughs> no, see, like, all right, this happened like long. <laughs> this happened a long time ago, when I was young and foolish. <laughs> yeah. Um, something happened. <laughs> I don't remember what. But somehow I must have cut someone off, or something happened. I don't remember doing anything, and all I remember is this guy came up on me. And he was aggressive, and he came up alongside of me, and he was, you know, giving me the New Jersey salute. And, uh, and he sped up, he cut me off, and I'm slowing down, and I'm like, uh, oh no. Like, cause I don't, I was, my, in my book, I was just driving, right? And this guy turns in, and then I turn in, and I follow him. Seriously, I did this. Guy pulls over, gets out of the car. I get out of the car. I'm a lot bigger than him. He gets back in. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm like, hey, because um, then I'm like, this guy's going to come into my church someday. And I wasn't the pastor at the time. I was just a youth pastor, but still. I'm like, this is, this is silly. 
And I'm like, hey, listen, I don't know what happened. As, as God was like, dude, dude, what are you doing? Dude, chill out. And I'm like, okay, hey, uh, all I know is you shouldn't do that to people. Though. Hey, I thought, whatever I did, I'm sorry, but you're going to get yourself killed. And the guy said a few choice words, and then, kept, and, and then you know, he left or whatever. And I'm like, I'm kind of shaking, and I'm like, what? What was that, man? I get in the car, and my wife freaks out, and I'm like, what are you freaking out over? And she's like, have you no memory? Oh, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> because I can go into crazy mode in the car. And nowhere else. I could be in the grocery store. Someone could bump me, and I'd be like, oh, oh, yeah, no problem. I could be in the car, and it's like, Someone get me this close to me. Guess what? Crazy boy comes out. I get circles in my eyes. These are spinning. I don't get it. And you walk away and you're like, well, I guess I told him. Huh. <laughs> like, no, we didn't tell him anything. That was juvenile. That was selfish, that, come on, what is wrong with you? I got issues, okay? God wants us to love. He wants us to, to listen. He doesn't want us simply to shout slogans. I mean, slogans and phrases are fantastic and appropriate, but that's not all he wants. He wants us to act. And we have to start right here with ourselves. If I had gotten and started, and I learned this later on in life, and I actually started talking, if I had took time to talk to Kelly in elementary school, I could have been his friend by just standing up and telling him, hey, this is inappropriate, and try to get to know him instead of sticking his face in the dirt. There's other ways of doing it. Maybe it takes a little longer. T.D. Jakes was talking about how we have to look at voting in the, in the most local levels. Because in the community, we always think about presidential elections and presidential elections. But the truth is, is all of this stuff is happening in the very local area. And so we have to be thinking about how are these people, these district attorneys and all these elected officials locally, what are they doing to create an atmosphere of, of, of love and respect and, and, and mutual and equal justice and equal rights and all those kinds of things. We've got to start in these little areas and be proactively being involved. When I was in Brooklyn, we had block associations. There's so much of a population. Out here, we don't even have mayors. We have like town, what are they called? The guys who, people, guys, town managers. Men and women who uh, we elect, or I don't even, do we don't elect them, we, do we? We just hire them, right? Yeah. Sorry, I'm really political. All right, I'm not the most political guy in the world. Anyhow, I'm just going to end with this because it's getting late. Deliver us from the evil one. And if you want to figure out how God is leading as you pray, if it's not leading toward love, if it's not e leading toward justice, if it's not leading toward things that unite but divide, you need to question if that voice is the voice of God. Change has to happen, but it has to happen in a way where we call on God to intervene. Because if you start taking God out of it, it's going to turn into chaos. And we, no one benefits from chaos except for evil. All right, let's pray. God, we... Uh, we ask that you would be faithful. We, we know you are faithful, Lord, but we just ask for your faithfulness. We ask that you would show us. We ask that you would <clears throat> grant us the ability to see your hand just spread out over our 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 neighborhoods, in our towns, in our cities, in our state, in our country. 
and the people would look to you and that we would come together as one people united by Christ, united by God. And that I would think of my neighbor even more than myself and I would esteem them higher. I just pray that you would make this happen, God. In Christ's name, amen. We're just going to sing one verse of Great is Thy Faithfulness. First verse. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. Expecting God's faithfulness in our lives. Go make a difference in every place you find yourself. Be an agent of love and change. Go in peace. See you next week.